Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, just, uh, I obviously am very, very pleased uh, to have uh, our Deputy Chief from, from the Syracuse Fire Department uh, down here, and I appreciate uh, um, yourself, the leadership of the Syracuse Fire Department, and Mayor Miner for letting you come testify. Um, I am uh, focused on the safety aspects of this. Um, if there is any theme out of this hearing, I think it is that this, uh, this Bach and Crude, uh, while not necessarily any more dangerous in and itself than any of the other uh, volatile chemicals that we in a modern society have and tra have to transport, um, it is a much broader volume than it's been. Uh, uh, between 2011 and 2012, we went from some 65,000 carloads to 257,000 carloads. Um, the first uh, panel was talking about basically a tripling, uh, I'm sorry, a, a multiplication by 10 over the, the period when we started doing this. So it's a lot more. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Zanetti, Chief Zanetti, are you seeing uh, uh, enough additional resources to handle that uh, additional risk created, not by necessarily the, the quality of this particular material, but the volume? Certainly improved training and planning. Uh, I know that in other discussions, the safety features of either the rail cars and uh, train or track maintenance, things of that nature, are going to help reduce risk. Uh, resources for emergency service first responders is always going to be a need there. We need to increase our training capabilities and our capabilities to respond to that catastrophic incident that may or may not happen. But we have to be prepared to, to be able to meet the needs and, and the people are expecting us to meet those needs. Do you feel that you and other local fire departments are getting enough uh, information, scientific and otherwise, to be able to assess any potential uh, threat that could occur if, if there was a, a train derailment, for instance? I, I personally am often looking for, for information, and most of the information that I have received is, is not been completely scientific. I, I think I, not that I am a scientist, but I, more information would certainly be better. Uh, information sharing is, is me very, to me very critical. Um, Mr. Zanetti, in upstate New York, as you know, we have a lot of uh, volunteer uh, fire departments. Um, how does that put increased pressure on a professional department like Syracuse in, in terms of its re regional leadership? Well, as I mentioned, we are the only hazardous materials team in the central New York region, so that responsibility does fall to us. Each volunteer department has uh, a home responsibility if it happens in their district, but quite honestly, if something does happen, they are going to be requesting our services and looking for us to help them solve their problem. So the resources you get, even though you are your, your responsibility is just for the City of Syracuse, you may very well use in all sorts of places in the State should there be some, some sort of incident. Yes, sir. Um, let me ask you, you this. Um, do, you, do you feel that there is any um, uh, particular kind of uh, safety provisions on the rail cars? This has been some point of controversy. Or do you have any uh, a way to assess that? Or are you, you know, feeling like a there's enough precautions as, as they already are? Or are you being asked these questions? Well, I'm not an engineer, so I really don't know about the engineering part of it. I know that my training has told me that if an incident happens, I have to respond and deal with it to the best of my ability, and the engineering part comes from some folks other than myself. Uh, In terms of mitigation, uh, you were talking about the various foams used uh, for this kind of hazardous material, but also other things, liquid petroleum, um, other kinds of hazards, chlorine, et cetera. Um, is this foam expensive, and uh, is, are there varieties of it? Give us a sense of, of the what that is. foam is roughly about 50 to $75 a gallon. Ooh. Uh, that's foam concentrate. Uh, so the cost is, is definitely significant. Uh, as I mentioned, we were trying to, to stockpile a certain amount, but I'm not sure that a, a catastrophic incident we would have enough. We would have to reach out to other resources uh, at the state and possibly at the federal level to get enough firefighting foam to really accomplish the goals that we need to accomplish. Has your budget gone up at all, uh, given this? Because uh, we have, I think we've, we've, in central New York, have also seen about that same increase in number of trains going through. Uh, that has not affected our budget in a positive way at all. All right. So, so basically, trying to do the same with what you what you had before, but with with more incidents. Yes. Sir. 
All right, well, Mr. Chairman, my, my time is up, but I, I would uh, like this committee and other committees to just consider the volume of this, not not uh, with any, with, with it, well, let me say this, without prejudice to whether the, the material itself is any more volatile or any less volatile than any other industrial material or energy source that we have to transport, but simply that the volume of it uh, requires that we look at ways to make sure that uh, emergency departments and first responders uh, do have the uh, amount of resources needed uh, to make sure that no, seri no, no minor incident or accident becomes a serious incident, and I will yield back.